hey guys hope you're well today is a entertainment discussion video as you can see with the glasses the reason why i have the glasses is because when i first started doing entertainment discussions i didn't have a mic and i still don't have a mic so i would just use the glasses as a mic but then i was like i can just put it down and whenever you see the glasses you just know it's a discussion video anyways the topic for this video started from watching jack edwards videos and he did one video discussing about celebrity memoirs and then he did another video about the translated books that he's enjoying at first i wanted to write an article about it about the potential legal issues with ghostwriters and book translators but then i kind of give up <laughs> i want to share this as a video form so here we are guys i will read a lot because i did start writing the article and then i kind of give up <laughs> anyways so the second part of the video will be just me rambling you will you will see when it's not <laughs> enough anyways the internet has revolutionized how we share and discuss literature making it more accessible to read books from different cultures facilitating books discussion worldwide translated books allow readers to explore diverse narratives beyond linguistic barriers moreover the literary industry has witnessed a rise a significant rise in celebrity memoirs and that search is based on the audience's desire to learn more about behind the scenes of a celebrity's life and maybe exclusive content about a specific issue, a specific celebrity scandal. And the famous book talker Jack Edwards has recently opened this discussion about the role of ghostwriters and translators in the publishing industry. These implications raise questions about copyright authorship in ghostwriting and book translation. This art, I see this article, but it's just this video. We'll explore the concept, arguing the need for more transparency to maintain literary work integrity and foster trust between the authors and their audiences. So, first of all, we'll talk about celebrity book memoirs and ghostwriters. So, there has been such a big demand of for celebrity book memoirs. So, these are <laughs> these are the four memoirs that I have. Chris Jenner's. Uh, we have. My Body by Emily Ratajkowski. This is a good book. I'm Glad My Mom Died by Janet McCarty. That was a really good book. And I feel like people don't even talk about this, but this was really... I had such a fun time reading this book. And this is Making a Scene by Constance Wu. Uh, she was an actress in Fresh Off the Boat. And um, Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, that was a really good book. You should really try read this. I know a lot of people have read this one. But guys, read this too. Read this too. I'll just like tell you, uh, I really enjoyed this book too. And to be honest, I don't really follow Emily's content online. But seeing her inside as a model and the relationship she has with her body and how people perceive her um, because of what she does, like a model, um, it was really interesting. I really liked that. This was for Shits and Giggles. And what did I think? what did i think about it actually i remember reading this i was like okay she's a smart woman okay she's really smart but there was towards the end she really talked about um the scandal with oj oh wait yeah i wrote here i said i don't think the nicole murder oj fan trial should have been should have taken such a big part of chris's book obviously it is probably like a PR thing for her to mention it, but she could have she could have said everything in one chapter because yeah, it did take a couple of chapters. Um, it is not badly written. I just don't think I got to know more about Chris. But then again, this is heav a heavy subject, and I totally I am totally empathetic with the situation. Yeah, um, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. I think she should write another book. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I think she should write another book, or her close writer should write another book. I don't know. Ah! I don't know, but yeah. Thank you to my wonderful collaborator, Mark Seal, who helped me, who helped breathe life into my memoir. Okay, so there is a collaborator. Somehow we just don't see it, his name anywhere on the book, nowhere. It really does look like she wrote it herself, so okay. Okay, book agent, editor, this. Okay, so it does look like she wrote it herself too. I'm not trying to discredit because there are some celebrities that I essentially don't write the books themselves and it's like entirely the ghostwriter who writes it and somehow the name of the celebrity is just on the on the book which i will explain later and then 
uh, Jenny McCarty, I'm pretty sure she wrote it herself. Yes, there has been a big demand of celebrity memoirs, as you can see myself for myself. The appeal lies with and the celebrities offering readers exclusive access to their life, often sharing behind the scenes and stories and personal struggles. While some celebrities write their memoirs themselves, it is far more common for them to collaborate with ghost writers, which is different from an editor because obviously when you write an essay, you need someone to proofread what you wrote, which is not the same thing. But a ghostwriter is someone who's heavily involved in the writing process of your book. Now, an editor, I'm trying to compare to a movie or like to music. But then again, it's so different. When you go on Apple Music and you see a song and it will say like artists, like the recording artist, the songwriter, the sound engineer, I think it is the equivalent of the acknowledgement page of a book. And for movies, it's just like the credit scenes. It's like, it's like I think that's the equivalent. So what is a ghostwriter? There are professional writers that assist in cre crafting the narrative while ensuring that the celebrity's voice and story are compelling or like are rightfully pre presented. Yet these collaborations often raise questions surrounding the authorship of the memoir. Now, here's the thing, people say, well, it's a ghostwriter. Like, maybe they don't want to be known to the public. Okay, yeah, yeah, but no. The way I see it is more so, it is common in the entertainment industry to have a pen name or a stage name. So if you don't feel comfortable with using your own legal name, you can always have a separate name for as an artist. But how I see it, maybe for a ghostwriter, is the ability to have two separate names for your the two types of work so you can have one name for celebrity memoirs and then if you were to write your own work your own novel you can have a separate name so i don't know if that's a common practice for ghostwriters or they just prefer to use one name for both their own work i mean essentially it's all the own work but more so like uh, anything that concerns ghostwriting and something just like a fiction novel or a non-fiction novel, I don't know. Okay, if I can provide more so the legal aspect, the general principle in copyright law defines the author as the individual who creates the original content, the original work. However, when it comes to determining authorship in collaborative work, it can be a bit more complex. For example, in the UK, there is the joint authorship or the co-authorship and the section 10 of the CDPA does define joint authorship as the collaboration of multiple authors, implying that the contribution for each author is not distinct from one another. Whereas section 10A of the CDPA does define co-authorship as still a collaboration, but the contribution from each other is distinct and independently identifiable, meaning that each author has the right to their specific contribution so the way i'm seeing it is that you know certain um books where they have each chapter is written by a specific author you know that for each chapter that's like co-authorship in the sense of for this particular chap chapter if i read a specific chapter i own the right to that specific chapter and if you write the second the next chapter you own the right to the next to the, that specific chapter whereas joint authorship like in music like the beatles john lennon and paul mccartney they are we don't specifically know how much paul wrote like half the song or like paul did the other half but like how much commitment like contribution was done separately so we just i would i think it's just like just a joint authorship in copyright law it is the life of the author plus 70 years after the death now in the case of joint authorship and i'll, I'll use the example of um Paul McCartney and John Lennon because Paul McCartney is still alive even if it's like after 70 years that Lennon has passed away the copyright is still valid because one of the two people is still alive so as long as Paul McCartney is alive and like plus to 70 years after his death there's still copyright on all the songs on the songs that they wrote together so you just hope that you're the person that you did this with just outlives you by a long time that was really morbid, I'm so sorry. Anyways, there is a big case in UK that illustrates the scope of co-authorship, joint authorship, and that is the Martin and Kogan case, which takes the concept of, of authorship in screenplay. And I really don't know about the movie, but I know the movie is 
has Meryl Streep in it, so I'll just put the poster here. So the issue was about whether or not Kogan's contribution to the screenplay were more than enough or sufficient for her to qualify as a joint author alongside Mr. Martin. The Court of Appeal did establish the fact that the contribution must be essential to the work and the contribution must be representative of the author's creative input rather than a simple editorial suggestion. In Europe, the big emphasis of authorship is that it has to reflect your own creative input, especially when we talk about AI, the rest of AI. Well, first of all, AI is not a person, so the art is out of the window, but also the fact that could Judge really write about this? First of all, I, I'm pretty sure she had to edit so much things out. But that story because it like she lived that story constantly lived her story like she experienced it she experienced all the bad experience and how that make you feel and all that stuff so ai cannot recreate that but essentially that case is really essential in understanding what are the criteria for joint authorship and as a result you would be able to be considered an author applying that case and the principle in the context of ghostwriters well of joint authorship or co-authorship is like essential because although ghostwriters don't generally fit into the co-authorship model because the memoir is a single work i i've never heard about this but i don't think there's one person writing a chapter and then the other person writing it. like i've never heard that in ghostwriters in like a sloping book memoir so essentially ghostwriting would be would apply to joint authorship now here's the thing it is very difficult to to establish how much the ghostwriter and the subject work how much they collab together but even if they do collab and like there's a very big emphasis on the collaboration from the both parties the industry generally likes to acknowledge only the celebrity which disregards the contribution from the ghostwriter who quite responsible for writing most or like even the entire memoir so it is it is quite frustrating but then it made me think of different ways a celebrity is like advertising themselves and the potential like and the potential link with publicity rights and what are the differences between a celebrity writing a book versus another avenue and the first example the biggest example that we can compare it to is celebrity perfume so while the public seems to understand the fact that whenever a celebrity releases a perfume line the celebrity was not like in a lab coat in a factory doing all the tests and all doing all this like i doubt it they were just like okay you can put my face on the perfume and we'll call it like the abin perfume you know it is very different than whenever you see your the name of your celebrity on a book you would assume that they wrote it themselves and the public generally thinks that the book is a uh, authentic expression of their lives of their life and thoughts the issue with that is the fact that this perception between a book versus a celebrity perfume really does raise the question between about authorship and authenticity in the sense of if a celebrity can be acknowledged can be recognized as an author but did not write the book themselves even though the content of the book is about their life okay guys so here i am i am using my apple pencil to essentially talk as i'm editing this i just i don't know where i went i was just rambling and it was just not cute to edit so and also i managed to answer my own question um as i'm editing this but what i want to say is the fact that with perfume celebrity perfumes is relying on to, on publicity rights means that obviously the importance of where it comes from like did you actually make the product does not matter it's irrelevant you just it's all about protecting the celebrity's image and the celebrity T has the power to say, I want to be associated with this pair of scissors. By the way, I have had this scissors since pre-K. We are like this. <laughs> but yeah, like I would want, if I, if I were to be somebody, I would want to be associated with this pair of scissors, okay? Not this pair of, not, not this ruler, but I want to be protected. I want to be associated with this. It's very different from writing a book because writing a book is... Yes, like from an industry perspective, you're like, yeah, okay, like you're creating your own brand, but it's more so reliant on copyright and the fact that copyright is all about being recognized for writing, for creating a work, and you're able to protect that work. Because essentially, you can't copyright your own life. 
we cannot do that. However, what you can copy right is the book that is about your life or the movie that is about your life or the song that is about your life. But me copywriting, waking up and making my breakfast to go to uni, it doesn't work. It's not, it's not work. It's not, it's, it's nothing. It's just good life. Now, the thing I don't understand is the fact that there's such a big boom in celebrity memoirs in the aspect of the celebrity wrote the book themselves rather than going the route of having a biography, someone writing the book about your about your life and then maybe using the concept of publicity rights to say, I approve this message. Like, I don't know, like this writer interviewed me and I, although I did not write the book, I accept the fact that this writer will write the book about me. And yet there's not that. It's really much so about I am I'm I wrote the book. I mean, the biggest example that I want I was it does it piss me off? No, not really, but and also I haven't read the book, but it's Prince Harry Spare. His face is on the cover, his name is on the cover, and the ghostwriter that is heavily involved is not there. You you have to like look into the book to see it. And now here's the thing, you could be like, okay, but the ghostwriter doesn't want to be put. No, because I looked online, the ghostwriter, and he has a, a lot of, like, he has other books. So, and also there's the concept of a pen name. So if you don't want your name to be publicly there, you can just have like a, a stage name, a pencil, like a pencil name, just to hide your identity. It's, that's your worry. The thing is, we will never know how much contribution was made, what was the partnership involved between Prince Harry and his ghostwriter. But, and I could do another video about this, is the fact that when it comes to audiobooks, oh, that man was reading every single word and that, with the other book, it's his voice. It's like the recording of it all. He, Prince Harry, could actually own that. Good for him. I'm just over it simplifying everything and just to go back with the example of biographies i don't necessarily need for the celebrity to be deceased to enjoy a biography um there is the biography of anna wintour by amy odell i haven't finished the book because it was really too long but anna wintour is still alive and well not every celebrity needs to say you want know i want to be a writer and let me say everything about my life i think you can just have it's okay to ask a writer and say, you know what, do an interview and I'm more than happy to well, give you the permission to write about my life. I think it's we're just really in a in an era where celebrities realize how diluted the, the entertainment industry has been and they're not making as much money as they were 10, 20, 30 years ago with films or music. So I think it's like this incentive of having to do everything themselves to like reinforce their self like their their public image and just means that power really so that could be another video now to have the time to do this i don't know translators and now then again i haven't like fully i have my notes here and there but to be honest i didn't like write that much there is also the lack of acknowledgement for translators the distinction between a ghostwriter and uh, translator is the fact that the ghostwriter is essentially writing an original work whereas the translator is doing more so derivative work so a derivative work is essentially doing a work that is based on a pre-existing work so when you think of musical arrangement or like movie adaptations from books and there are so many more examples but essentially to create a derivative work you would need the permission first of all from the original author and from there you would work on the translation so essentially you would have to translate the book and but also trying to maintain the the banter and the references and make sure that the flow is still the same more or less the same so it's really a, a lot of work that you're doing and essentially as for the translation you would be the author of that then again it's also about like authorship and ownership of the copyright but also when you're being when you have the copyright ownership it's really about like the how much can you control of your work and with the derivative work it's a bit more limited because you need the permission of the copyright owner of the original work a big example is jk rowling with harry potter the fact that they made it into a like, big movie series 
it's because they needed her permission or when there's like the is there a harry potter like broadway thing i don't know um there's something happening in london about harry potter i'm so sorry i don't know but they would need the permission of jk rowling it's not like they need the permission of the translator or something or if something were to happen like in france uh, that is about harry potter they would need jk's rolling permission and not the person who translated the book into french like you know what i mean so it's very very complicated but then again when it comes to like the practical sense of the publishing industry so here we have a convenience store woman the author of the book obviously but then there is no indication of the translator unless you open the book and it is here written translated from the japanese by Ginny Taplay Tikimori. And it's such a shame. Because I do understand that the author of the of the story should be acknowledged. But if you have space for all of this, you should have had space to write who translated the book. Before the coffee gets cold, and obviously you have the author here. But then again, it is once you open the page that it does specify the translated book and i think jack edwards also pointed out but and i'm just paraphrasing but he did specify the fact that when he knows it's a specific author that translated a book from a different language he just knows that it's going to be good because he knows the author's style and how they are able to translate well a book into a different language so i in my head it just makes sense that if you know especially if it's like a well-known book translator add their name i think i'm trying to think in my own in my own experience experience have i read a book that was translated and just did not enjoy i don't know i think i should do a video about that like writing reading books in english i mean the same book but in french and see no i like when i was a kid i i was put in i was put in advanced english but i was so i was like i would not speak because i was the only one in my class who did not speak english at home all the other kids in my classroom would speak english at home so what I would do is whenever there would be like a reading exam, I would just find the book in French, re read the book, the entire book in French, and then when it came the time for the exam, I would just write the answers in English. That's what I did. That's literally what I did. I think I should do this experiment again to see if like it changes anything. I did that. <laughs> so it does affect who does the translation also has an impact. But then again, like on the cover it doesn't say anything all right in the back it does say like the the author the title and then here it does say so but it's so small it is so small and there's so, like there's so much space you could have made this bigger and this a bit more readable that is wild something that is very interesting is the fact that i had recently a discussion with someone from the industry and i was telling them i was like it is so frustrating that we cannot see the name of the ghostwriters or the translators on the cover like what is this and they actually told me interesting like a little insight they said that i don't know is that is that competition no they told me that there was something called like cover credit like from a copyright perspective the ghostwriter and the translators are acknowledged they are recognized as joint authors co-authors of the work and that will not go away like they they are recognized as that now from the perspective of the industry the marketing perspective it might just be more beneficial to ha just have one big name on the cover for the author and then anything that has to do with like the the reviews um essentially um, like the guardian said something about it or like vogue fucking sally rooney Sal sally rooney why do i see name with such a fresh accent i'm so sorry and then looking back there's like the times and daily mail so essentially it's like everything is like within a contract and it might just be more beneficial within the terms of the contract to say you want um i'm sorry but the time is a bit more important than you and although we cannot put your your name on the cover your beautiful name will appear will appear here so, so it's never it's not even an issue with the legal aspect it's just an issue with the industry i am an advocate for transparency and maintaining a good relationship between the author and the audience and i would love to see the name of the ghostwriter and the translators on the cover thank you so although from a legal perspective 
the con contribution from Ghost Riders and translation is acknowledged. It does look that the gap is between the law and the actual industry where we're not even able to see the names of the people who are putting so much work, so much time and energy on the cover. And I think it is very important. The incentive of like pushing people into, I don't know, like pushing languages and like if someone wants to translate books or like essays or stuff like that, like if you're able to see people who is right, who is doing the work on the cover, I think it can incite people and other generations into translating books or pursue ghostwriting. But I also think that us as the audience, as readers, we also hold the power to acknowledge and on these invisible writers by acknowledging their work and also advocating for the recognition. Transparency is essential for maintaining the integrity in the publishing industry, but also to foster a better and stronger trust between the authors and us, the audience. With that being said, I hope you liked the video that I provided more insight and I will see you guys next time. Bye!